Hey everyone, today I wanted to go ahead and share three fun games and activities you can play in your classroom to help your students practice place value. Now about a year ago, I went ahead and shared a place value video with two great activities, Scoop and Group, as well as Place Value Bootcamp. And that video looks like this one. I will go ahead and link that at the end of this video for you to go ahead and get two more place value games if you're looking for some more fun. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and share three fun place value games. So if you're excited and ready to watch, go ahead and click that thumbs up and let's dive in. All right, game number one for practicing place value is called race to 50 or race to 100. Now with place value, when you're teaching those K through two learners, you really want them to understand that, you know, 10 single units equals a 10 and that the number 13 equals 110 and three single ones. And in order to do that, you wanna use a lot of manipulatives and a lot of hands-on practice with these numbers. Now you may have played this before, but in case you haven't, let me show you how to play. So in order to play race to 50, it's just as it sounds that the first person to get to 50 is the winner. Now here I actually have both players on one board so they could play back and forth and sit across from each other, but you could easily take a 100 chart and cut it in half and give one to each student. Now what you'll do is you can either use one die or two dice, it's up to you. For this example, let's use one and students would roll the dice and they would get two or however many they rolled and put it on their chart just like that. They'll do it face up and then the other person will go and they will go back and forth rolling and getting that many cubes. One, two, three, four, five, until the first person gets to 50. Now, the one different thing is as students roll, let's pretend for the sake of this example that the person has gone on to the next one. Once you've created a 10, students would have to then take it in and stack these all up. And I like them doing this physical act because they're like exchanging basically the 10 ones for a rod. And once they have those 10 as one single thing now, they go ahead and put it down this way. So now when you go over and you check on your students and you see how they're doing, let's pretend they're on 33, you'll ask them how many do you have and you want them to see not only do they know they're on 33 because they can see it right here, but you'll want to ask them to count it up. And when they do that, they shouldn't have to count by ones anymore. You're trying to teach them to say 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33. So this is just a nice visual for them to see the tens and ones in any given number up until 50. Now I always start with race to 50, but race to 100 is the exact same game. And that one students would ha have their own 100 chart. And I usually use two dice for that game. That is a game that I would definitely play earlier on in my place value unit. After I've had students get used to showing different, you know, numbers in tens and ones format. All right, place value activity number two is called What's My Value? And this is an activity that I would do whole group or in small group with my students to really get them talking about place value. So this is kind of where like a number talk situation would come in. Okay, so when you're having a number talk, like what's my value, you'll want to go ahead and use three different numbers where you have the one or any number, but you want the same number in three different places. And what you're gonna do is basically you're going to point out to students that this one here, this one here, and this one here all mean different things. So what you'll ask students to do is you'll say, I want you to look for the one in each number and they will go ahead and do that. And then you'll ask them, does the one in each number equal the same thing? And you want to just kind of hear what they have to say. You want to listen to them discuss this. And as students continue to work through this, you'll want to point out that this number right here, 17, is 110 and a 7. So this 1 does not equal 1 here. It actually equals 10. Here in 31, there's 10, 10, 10, 1. That 1 does equal 1. You could even show them that with some cubes. This one in this 17 actually means this. 31 here actually means this. And in 100, they'll know it means a 100. And if you have the um, 
base 10 cubes, you can use the big hundreds block, and zero tens and six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here the one in this number does not equal one again, doesn't equal 10, it actually equals 100. Once you've gone ahead and done this with students together so they can actually see it and you've discussed it with them, it makes a great number talk for a morning meeting or at the beginning of a math block. And you would do it the same way, except let's pick a different number this time. Let's pick a uh, three. So we can do 37, uh, 320, and let's do 53. So you could ask students again, what number is the same in all of these? And they can notice three. And then this time you would ask them, what's the value of these numbers? And they can explain it to you. You could have students come up to the board and you know draw the three tens here. You could have them show you it with cubes or with base 10 blocks, however they want to, as long as they understand the value of this three is different based on where it is in each number. I really love this activity because it gets students really understanding the concept of place value and how a one isn't always a one when you see it inside a number. It really helps them think about the value of those numbers and the meaning of where they are in a two digit or three digit number. Now, other than having different great discussions like the one I just shared, either whole group or in small group, you could also have students practice this further by having them play memory. And in my place value unit, I have a memory game It looks like this and basically students need to match the number with the underlying digit to its actual value. Okay, game three. Easy peasy. Mm. All right, place value activity number three I want to share today is one of my personal favorites. Now, as you know, with math, you want to go ahead and introduce a concept. You want to make it as hands-on as possible so they really can feel it and understand it. You want to talk about the concepts like we did in What's My Value so you can make sure through conversation that they understand. And then you want students to practice practice, practice. And you already know I love to practice math skills through games. Now I have made many, many math games in my career as a teacher, but Zoe's Zoo Fiasco is one of my favorites that I've ever created, if not my favorite, and it is a math mystery that I just came out with about a month ago. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in a little video so I can show you how to play it, but basically it is a way for students to practice counting up those tens and ones. This one specifically is for first grade so it goes up to 120 and then because I created this you know during COVID times I also made it available in Seesaw and Google it's preloaded and you can do the whole mystery there so let me show you how that works okay so for Zoe's zoo fiasco it is one of my math mysteries I have one for addition uh, subtraction this is the place value one I just came out with one for telling time and they are so much fun what it does is it has a scenario. And so for this place value one, the scenario is Zoe is, well, she works at the zoo and on her first night working, uh, all the animals escape from their exhibits. So now she has to kind of solve the clues to figure out which animal goes back into which exhibit. So when you open up the file folder, there are eight different clues. Let me show you one my son Theo already did. And since this is place value, what you'll have to do is he will have to count up the tens and ones and he'll have to figure out what number is being shown here. So here he counted 50 and then he goes to the key and 50 equals O. And then here's 23 equals N, 110 equals E, and he'll solve this clue. So this clue was one, 10, five ones. Once he does that, that's going to give him which exhibit Pete the Panda belongs in. So he found out that Pete the Panda is matched up in exhibit 15. So he found that match. Then he could go and do another clue. Here we're finding Leo's exhibit, Leo the Lion, and he would do the same thing. So he would figure out what the clue says and they all match up to a different exhibit and they'll match up to the number here. Now this is the hands-on version of this game and I love it because students could slowly work through this, you know, over like a week's time. There's eight different clues, so it might depend how long it would take each student, or you could pair students up and have them work together to solve the mystery. Here are the clues and what you will do is you will go ahead and click on one of the clues and go solve it. So let's say we start here. We'll click on the link, page 12. And here we'll find out 
Pedro's exhibit. In order to do that, we actually need to go ahead and look up and try to figure out what number this represents. Here I have a 100, 110, 111, 112. Then you'll look down at the key and 112 equals O. So I'm going to use my marker and write O. I'm gonna go ahead and solve what this clue says, and the clue is going to tell me which exhibit belongs to Pedro. Once I figure that out, I can drag it right up to the top here, or I can just go ahead and write the number 10, if that's the answer, inside the little magnifying glass. Then I'll go back to my zoo on page four, and I can drag a star to show that I am done with that clue. Every time you finish a clue, you will want to drag a star over the top of it so you know that one is already done. Once you have completed all the clues, you can go to your last page here and you can drag over which exhibit each animal belongs in. And you can go ahead and press submit to your teacher. So there were three fun place value games that you can go ahead and play with your students. As I was making this video, I was trying to remember some of the other place value videos I've already created in the past. And I mentioned the one at the beginning of the video where I have a scoop and group activity in place value bootcamp. It looks like this, but I also made another place value video maybe about six months ago or so. And I share a print and play place value game. It's called Rat Trap. That video looks like this. And then I remembered one more where students are working with a 120 chart, but they are getting used to play place value, and that game is called Aeropaths. It's one of my favorite games, and that video looks like this. So I will go ahead and link all of those down in the description below. Go watch those videos if you're looking for some more fun place value activities to do with your students, and grab those freebies as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there are any other math skills or concepts you want some activities for or you need help with, please go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I'll go ahead and take a look through and if I already have a video, I will let you know. I'll respond to your comment and if I don't have a video, maybe I can make one to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. I'll see you next time. Bye.